Okay, so our question of the day is about mole conversions. Obviously, these are made of numbers. There's no such thing as a wiggum or a twiggum or a twiggum. And I want to figure out how to do multi step recording. So let's review. We've already answered all of these questions, so let's just go through it really quickly. So a mole is like a gazillion, it's a huge number. It's six with 23 zeros after it. Uh, and how many atoms are in one mole? That's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That answer is the same if you ask for particles or if you ask for molecules as well. Those words are interchangeable. How much does one mole of carbon weigh? That's 12 grams, and we get that from the atomic mass on the periodic table. How much does one mole of carbon dioxide weigh? That's 44 grams, and you get that by adding the atomic mass of one carbon and two oxygen. You've done this before. That was all M6 was about on both the bronze and the silver level. How much does two moles of carbon dioxide weigh? You do the same thing that you did for number four, but then you just multiply it by two, because you're not talking about a singular mole, you're talking about two of them. So the aim for this presentation is how do we use moles to count atoms? So if one mole is this huge number, where does that come from? And that's the number of atoms that are in 12 grams of carbon, if they're using carbon. A mole is also the number of atoms that are in 14 grams of nitrogen. So we use conversions in chemistry, which you've also seen. That's what our performance task is about. And that's multiplying by a conversion factor, which is a fraction that equals 1. The same way that 2 over 2 equals 1, so does um, a conversion factor. And that's why we set up those t-charts. So the unit you want, you put it on the bottom so you can cancel it out. So how many minutes are in 3 years? That means that you would start with years, cancel out 2 days, cancel out to weeks, and other such steps like that. And then if you did that math, you would get three years. You cancel out years, and then maybe go to days. Then from days, you would go seven days in a week. Or 24, actually, it would be smarter to go from days to hours, and then you would get your number. Another example is the one that we saw in Day. That's totally fake. Um, if three wiggums equals two spigums and one spigum equals five tigums, how many tigums are in 12 wiggums? And that would just be a two step problem. So, conversions in chemistry, we use the gram mass, which is from the atomic mass on the periodic table, and that equals one mole. This is what a mole, the actual animal, looks like, in case you were curious. So, to convert from grams to moles, you just divide by that conversion factor the grams equaling the moles, but you write it as a fraction. So the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the gram mass, so that's the atomic mass. So the mass that you start with, say you have 45 grams of carbon dioxide, divided by 44, which is the gram formula mass. So you find it of carbon here, and we know that's 12. And then you use the conversion factor to convert. You'll do the same thing here. First, find the atomic mass, or the gram formula mass. Our total for NaOH is 40. And then you use your conversion factor. So to convert from moles to grams, you do the opposite. Instead of dividing, you just multiply. So if we look at this example, you find the gram formula mass of H2SO4, which is 98.1. Then you use your conversion factor. From going from moles to grams, you multiply. So you're going to work with group mates um, to start your classwork, and we can finish it tomorrow. We'll do a couple examples together. So to solve this problem, do you divide by the gram formula mass or multiply? Are you going from moles to grams or grams to moles? 